Kaylee E. White, the editor of Restoring America at the Washington Examiner. And Kaylee, I'm pretty sure the Republicans are going to want to get some specifics out of James Biden. Numbers are often viewed as specific. So if I were doing the questioning, my first question would be, why are you exchanging all these huge sums of money between Joe and James? Because in my experience, like, I think I bought my brother a sandwich one time. I didn't exchange $200,000 with him. Where would you kick off, Kaylee? Well, I think it's important to remember where we started with this. So last year, Democrats and their lackeys in the leftist media denied that the Biden family was involved in any sort of corruption or influence peddling at all. Now they're admitting that at least James Biden and Hunter Biden were, in fact, selling Joe Biden's influence, but they're still denying that Joe Biden had anything to do with it. And, of course, they can't deny this anymore because there is evidence in writing of both Hunter and James doing just that. Hunter and a text message to one of his Chinese business associates threatening that his father was in the room with him. And James Biden was, of course, involved with this America, America Corps deal. And he was also involved in an FBI investigation into a Mississippi trial attorney who admitted that he hired James Biden for access to Joe Biden. So this is at multiple instances of this sort of influence peddling. So, you know, the question here is still whether Joe Biden was directly involved or had knowledge of it. But at the very least, his family members didn't seem to think that he'd care that much, that they were using his name to make a profit off of it. So the best case scenario defense for Joe Biden has now become, well, maybe he wasn't actively corrupt, but he turned a blind eye to it. That's still corruption. Yeah, and it's going to be very hard to make that turn a blind eye to it argument when you listen to what Tony Bobulinski uh, testified to last week to House lawmakers. He said that James Biden actually came into the whole deal because uh, it was the feeling was that Hunter Biden was unreliable when they were trying to do this big deal with the Chinese energy company CFC. So they brought James Biden on board to get another family member. And then he testified that he had a conversation with James and said, aren't you guys concerned that if Joe does run for president of the United States in the future, that you guys are doing business directly with the Chinese. And according to Bobulinski, James Biden laughed and responded, plausible deniability. That exchange, uh, Kaylee, is something that I am sure is going to come up today. Absolutely. And again, the Biden family was well aware of the implications for Joe Biden's political career, especially when he entered the 2020 race. Remember when Hunter Biden's attorney, also known as his sugar brother, testified before the House committee, we learned that he admitted that Hunter's tax issues became a serious problem during the 2020 campaign cycle. Now, the lawyer denied that those issues had anything to do with Biden's political ambitions at that point, but the timing is just a little too convenient. Convenient for us to believe that. Of course, Democrats are going to use today to just completely ask a bunch of questions about Smirnoff, the FBI informant who we weren't allowed to know anything about in the previous years. But all of a sudden, now that the Biden DOJ has, you know, put him behind bars or at least is trying to, uh, Democrats are going to talk a lot about him, saying this thing should all be dropped. It all comes down to Tony Bobulinski in the end, so that's why we asked you about that. Meantime, there was a big town hall last night. Donald Trump addressing his political rivals, Joe Biden and Nikki Haley, during said town hall last night. Let's take a listen. She's not working. She's here. She's down by 30, 35 points. And everybody knows her. You're not supposed to lose your home state. Shouldn't happen anyway. And she's losing it bigly. I'll challenge him right now. And I, we can do you. You can do anybody you want. I, I'll take anybody from uh, CNN, which is doing very poorly in the ratings, by the way, as you probably know. I, I, I'll take anybody because I think you have an obligation in this case. You really have an obligation to debate. I don't think he's going to debate, though. I really don't think so. Really two topics to unpack there, Kaylee. Is there any chance Democrats let Biden debate? And if um, Haley loses, to use Trump's phrase, bigly on Saturday, is there any chance she continues on into Super Tuesday? Well, Joe Biden couldn't even bring himself to do a softball Super Bowl interview, so I highly doubt he's going to get on that debate stage with Donald Trump again. Now, whether they can make it a, a reasonable excuse for him at this point is another question, because every time that Biden refuses to do hits with the press, every time he refuses to take questions, every time he refuses to debate Trump, the public is going to see that and realize that there are still concerns about his age that he is not willing to address, and they're going to blame that as the reason. Now, 
As for Nikki Haley, I'm not sure what she's trying to accomplish here or what she's trying to win. I think that she's trying to, to she's taking a gamble to be the last man standing in this. And if you're her and you're looking at what the New York court just decided in the in the case against Trump this week, essentially trying to bankrupt him by forcing him to put up 300 something million dollars just to file an appeal in the case, she's hoping that something drastic enough happens where Trump is forced to drop out of the race and that she is the only candidate candidate left to choose. Whether that's en enough of a gamble, you know, to sacrifice her political right. career for, right. I don't think that it's worth it, but certainly that's what she's thinking. Donald Trump also confirmed his VP short list, Vivek Ramaswamy, Ron DeSantis. Mm. Tim Scott, Byron Donalds, Tulsi Gabbards, and Christy Nome. So some news was made there as Not well. that short. It could yeah. be shorter. It's One, pretty two, long. Three, yeah. four, five, six. You're right. Six names. Seven names. Kaylee, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Thanks, Kaylee. Have a great morning. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.